The pursuit of happiness is a fundamental right guaranteed in the Constitution and defined in the Declaration of Independence to freely pursue joy and live life in a way that makes you happy, as long as you know how to use the laws to achieve what you want. This changes things a bit, doesn't it? This means that in order to do what makes you happy, you have to know some laws, and that's why I'm here. Welcome to Lovely, a show about law, love, and life. Live a happy life using the universal law of love at the heart of your decision making. And of course, real laws too. I'm your host, Bahar Ansari, a hippie and happy lawyer turned IT founder turned, well, me, a consciously creative counselor. This show is built on one simple principle that us as human beings do things for only two reasons, love, our ultimate self-fulfillment, or laws, natural and man-made. What transcends both is creativity. It's innovation. It's love empowered by laws. It's love. Be love, learn law, spread love. Hello, my lovely friends. Today, we're going to talk about my story of becoming happy, a second chance at love. I'm Bahar Ansari. I'm a female Iranian immigrant, startup and immigration attorney. I know, like being blonde wasn't tough enough in the legal industry. I'm also a founder, a teacher, a creator, a dreamer, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, a friend, a woman, and a rebel. Hearing these two concepts, love and laws, in the same sentence may sound a bit foreign. It's been a really, really long time since Romeo and Juliet. However, they're closer than you think. The pursuit of happiness is a fundamental right guaranteed in the Constitution and defined in the Declaration of Independence to freely pursue joy and live life in a way that makes you happy, as long as you don't do anything illegal or violate the rights of others. This means to be happy, you must know some laws. Everything you love in life is governed by rules. Your relationship with your body, with your significant other through marriage, guardianship and raising children, driving with traffic laws, going to the store through contracts, and of course, business rules for all of our professional relationships. The U.S. is one of very few countries with any mention of happiness in its supreme laws. Yet, according to surveys, only 14% of Americans are happy. Why is that? Do the rules make it impossible for 86% of America to be happy? Maybe. We have to take a good look at the systematic barriers. So why does happiness even matter? On average, happy people are more successful than unhappy people at both work and love. They get better performance reviews, have more prestigious jobs, and earn higher salaries. They're more likely to get married, and once married, they're more satisfied with their marriages. Happy people also tend to be healthier and live longer. It has also been found that positive emotions broaden our thinking in ways that make us more flexible, more able to see the big picture, and more creative accumulated and compounded over time, transforming us for the better by building the resources, strength, wisdom, friendship, and resilience we need to truly thrive. Positive emotions are also the most important ingredient in determining a person's resilience in hard times. Positive emotions help both our bodies and our minds cope with stress, challenges, and negative feelings. And these are just a few personal benefits. Happiness affects the economy significantly as well. Economists have carried out a number of experiments to test the idea that happy employees work harder. Through experiments, they found happiness made people around 12% more productive. A recent Gallup survey found that only 13% of employees are engaged at work, meaning the vast majority of working adults don't enjoy their work. By one recent measure, this cost the U.S. companies roughly $450 to $500 billion annually. Looked at another way, though... Low worker engagement is an opportunity for companies to boost their productivity by investing in employees' welfare and workplace happiness. Happiness is created. Happiness is a state of being that's co-created with our environment. To go where we've never been before, we need to harness the inherent creativity of our workforce. This means more creativity at work, more happiness at work. It will actually be good for America to have more happy employees. The only absolute law in the universe is love, the law of creativity. The rest are second laws. What transcends both is love, it's creativity. Developing your natural creative skills, the other half of your brain, through habitual creative exercises is a practice you should adopt. And to do that, learning laws is a practice you should continue. 
My love story evolves with four career redesigns. And the most important thing I have learned so far is that the third time was not the charm. But that's not where the story starts. The story begins with a little girl born in Iran and a big dream. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to start all the way there. But here's the gist. I was born in Iran in 1986 during the Iran-Iraq war. Let me go back a little further. My parents met getting their MBAs in Oklahoma in the 70s. They had returned to Iran and, well, the revolution happened, so they had to stay. They had always planned to return to the U.S., especially having two daughters in post-revolution Iran during the eight-year war. We moved in 2000. I was 15. I finished high school, went to college, went on to law school, and after for a postdoc and became a lawyer. When I started my career, I never imagined it would be what it's become today. In the last three years, I founded two IT startups, traveled around the world speaking at conferences, worked with some of the most prominent lawyers, judges, and executives in the world, and was elected as the top six women in law who are changing the law as we know it. Won a few awards and ended up in Forbes. It wasn't an easy road. The legal industry is still a white male dominant industry. Even Facebook's Zuckerberg got called out by Congress for this lack of diversity. According to 2009 statistics, of the 1.3 million lawyers in the U.S., 64% are men and 85% are white. Women make up less than 16% of all law firm partners and a fraction of them a minority. I'm one of these women. I first began my career as a litigation attorney and quickly realized that the law's traditional practice was not for me. In 2016, I co-founded a disruptive technology company specializing in automation tools for lawyers. In 2018, I launched my true passion, Second Law, a virtual law firm specializing in creative law. It has definitely been a crazy, fun, fast, and wild ride. But with all of this traditional success, I found myself drifting further away from my passion into the busyness of running a business. Then the pandemic happened, and I decided to take some time off. It felt like I just stepped out of a washing machine. This is the first summer I remember taking time off as an adult. It was a tough time. I had stress withdrawals like an addict, and this against the backdrop of a growing pandemic and a breakup. It was such a surreal feeling to have time to be, to feel, to think, to learn, to discover, and be inspired. Time to concentrate without the rush of life. Time to contemplate a different direction for my future. To fall in love with my career all over again. Three years ago, I had set out to build the impossible. My mission was to close the access to justice gap through technology. When I started my last startup, I said to myself, that I will change my grandchildren's world for the better with what I'm building, with what I'm doing, the generation of digital nomads, that it will be in their era where they will see the results of my dreams, an accessible justice system. And here we are, three years later, watching courts and lawyers all over the world go online, expedited by a pandemic. It's a brand new world, a world that did not exist when I pursued my first dream. Justice meant something different now. In my time off, I connected more deeply with my family, with my friends. I had tough conversations with people in my community about the world we're living in. I was inspired to see everyone's perspective, their values, their intimate wants and dreams. I remembered small memories and images from my childhood I hadn't thought about in years. I questioned everything, and I rediscovered myself, my passions, my values, and of course, my people. I discovered my roots. People have different definitions for success. I defined my success two years ago to have a chance to have my passion be impactful on a system that has shaped human behavior for centuries. In this, I was successful, and I get to observe these changes in my lifetime. I feel pride and joy in my creation and contribution. When I looked at things in that context, and I took a look at my life, I had a new dream, to share my passion for empowering more dreamers to create, to live life in the present enjoy, to contribute to my community of creators. This time, I'm designing my career around my happiness, creating and sharing happiness, to work with dreamers who understand the true power of co-creation. My personal journey has revealed a simple pattern that inspired the creation of everything I'm doing, a method that I've used through all my biggest decisions in life, a technique I've used in problem solving and solution design for my clients, the essence of how I see the world, a method I call love.
What's love got to do with it? I have come to understand that there are only really ever two reasons why we do things in our journey to happiness. Love, because we want to. This is the pursuit of our ultimate self-fulfillment. All traditional, familiar, cultural, gender, societal conditioning, rules, and customs fall into this category, based on the assumption that following these rules is purely your choice. If you choose to do it, you can choose just as easily not to do it. Either way, there are consequences. And the second reason are laws, because we have to. All natural and man-made laws fall into this category. But we all know stories of love that have defied laws to create extraordinary. Life is simple, but not that simple. Things don't always fit into that perfect box of love or laws. What transcends both, what's in between, is creativity. It's a lovely creation. It's balance. It's love. If you learn anything from me, learn this, that everything in life is negotiable. In Farsi, we even have a word for it. It's called chune. Say that to any Farsi-speaking person and begin negotiations. You can learn to become a great negotiator. Start by taking negotiation strategies from your toddler at bedtime, the thirsty and starving philosopher. Let's get to my next point, defining your love. They say your gift in life is what you were asked to stop doing as a child. I was a fashion-loving negotiator. That explained why I became a creative lawyer. But I understood my natural gravitation towards laws much later in life, while soul-searching during a pandemic. When I remembered my childhood in Iran, I remembered having many questions. Why did I have to cover my hair outside at the age of nine? Or why were our schools separate for boys and girls? My parents answered my questions with great detail. My mom explained the structure of the government and the laws I needed to be aware of. For example, wearing makeup was illegal. Try explaining that to a mini fashionista. It was no joke. I watched both my mom and my teenage sister bailed out of prison in Iran by my father because they were arrested for having makeup on. Laws there are so intertwined in your daily life as a citizen. I guess it's just in my core to care about laws and the structures built by those laws. My mom was a political science major and an aspiring advocate. My dad, an entrepreneur and a trained accountant. My mom has always been super political. In fact, she hosts a progressive political commentary with a hint of comedy every afternoon live from our living room. She often gets into heated debates with her co-host, my dad. Rules make life simple. You know what's required to do and you understand the consequences in your failure to follow those rules. You also understand that rules are changeable. That makes for a very informed decision. You know where the lines are, and if you choose to color outside the lines, well, you know the risks involved in that choice too. When you understand the two principles of life, love and laws, the absolute and the fluid, you understand that for that polarity to exist, there has to be a balance, a rhythm, a bridge. That bridge is creativity. We humans have a deep capacity to feel love. We're meant to be happy creatures. Why else would we have the capability to feel happiness and to recreate that happiness over and over again if we weren't meant to create happiness? The old paradigm is gone. The days of having to do anything is over. Unless it's required by law, if you're doing something, it's because of love or you created love. And that's the most beautiful thing in life, the freedom to choose, the freedom to develop love. When you shift into balance, into love, you can live from your heart in all areas of your life. And that's the true path to happiness. Crazy is believing in something, an idea that only you can see and no one else can. Something that's never been done before. Insanity is believing it to be possible in this reality. Creativity is building it and making other people see what you saw in the first place. Yes, there is some complexity in life. But the complexity is not an impossibility. It's something a beginner creator can solve because a creator sees the world in problem and solution pairs. A creator understands the web of life as a symphony conversing with them rather than a force trying to stop or discourage their deepest passions and desires. A creator is confident in the value they bring in themselves and their creations. A problem, therefore, is not a stressor. It's an opportunity to design a solution that's fit for specific needs, wants, and dreams. The deep spark that drives a creator to go that extra mile to reach for greatness, even when it's not expected of them, and good is really good enough. To think differently, 
cheers to those dreamers who wake up at 5 a.m. and hustle, but also to the ones who stay up all night to create, the ones who listen to themselves when they need rest, and the ones who just keep at it. Only passion, desire, only love can do that. You don't have to love everything you do. That's impossible. What you should do is to do everything for love and from love. To do that, you need to know some laws, both natural and social laws. Just like the grandparents' advice, balance is always key. If you learn one thing from me is to remember that everything in life is negotiable. That's why lawyers exist. That's why innovation exists. Innovation always comes from breaking the standard rules and norms. It also sometimes comes from cutting corners, from lack of attention to detail, which is highly against social norms, to see the big picture, to solve bigger problems that will render your first problem moot. That's why developing your natural creativity skills, the other half of your brain through habitual creative exercises is a practice you should adopt. And to do that, learning laws is a practice you should continue. Just ask why. Start there. Ask why. Choose love. The human essence and the only absolute and universal law is love. The only other constant about us is changing. We continuously discover, innovate, evolve, and grow. And we do that creatively. We didn't come here with instruction manuals. That's why the only absolute law in the universe is love. That innate sense we did arrive with to sniff out what's in our best interest, what makes us happy. And we create at second laws democratically to solidify what we believe collectively to be in the best interest of our society. Based on what we know scientifically but we don't always know best. Scientific theories happen to be 50% inaccurate and our thoughts, beliefs, and values are continuously changing, sometimes accelerated by events like a pandemic. Then modern tools come out and we correct our mistakes. We solve problems like convictions overturned based on new DNA evidence. The scientific proof made possible by creators who believed it to be possible. Change ignited by dreamers who took to the street to protest and cause corrections in the system, people working together to pursue our happiness. It's dreamers and creators who prove over and over that even the most ordinary of us is capable of defying the odds at becoming happy humans. Life, this precious life, was merely a possibility. That possibility has brought humanity here. People do a lot more for smaller chances or possibilities. There are billions spent on space exploration for the mere possibility of finding life somewhere else. That's great. I support dreaming big. But what about the life we have here now? Your life, my life. Our days are full of possibilities within our choices. And each option twists the plot in unpredictable directions. It's more exciting to head for the unknown than the two roads you've already seen the end of. So how do you love It sounds like this cool word I just created, but is it actually helpful? Of course, yes. Approach creation with this simple four-step process. First, define your happiness. Dream, keep an open mind, let your imagination go wild. Answer your what and your why. Remember, always ask why. Second, design your happiness. Be flexible, define your how, how much, and when. To do this, you need to know laws. Three, share your happiness. Inspire, be a rebel. Inspire the creation of your dream. Find your tribe, find your co-creators. Believe it or not, this is also mostly laws to protect you from harm and others from harm through liability rules and contracts. And four, create your happiness. Be patient, birth the solution. To create anything, you need to know laws social laws, scientific laws, unspoken laws, and personal boundaries and rules. So the moral of the love story, always choose love. Choose you. Be prepared to always change your beliefs and be proud of yourself every day for at least one thing that you did that day, even if it's one to 99 ratio. And in closing, all that to say Why I refuse to be a traditional lawyer and all the terrible lawyer jokes. I decided instead to become a unicorn in law, a happy lawyer, one with a heart full of love to empower dreamers, to manifest creations that will better humanity, one person, one smile at a time. Starting with this podcast, 
and starting with you. Rule number one for any growth is to keep an open mind. It's to be brave, to go to new depths of yourself and new heights of your dreams. Despite my bold choices in hair, I've always been more reserved, which has led to a pretty private life. I believe the only way through a challenge is straight through it. And as a part of my personal growth, I'm challenging myself to share my dreams and my passions with you, to empower you with my love. I'm committed to answering your questions and sharing my success and challenges, tips, advice, and whatever else comes to mind in this podcast. And with that, my lovely friends, I will leave you with some advice. Dream big, be brave, and be happy. I'm already proud of you. Thanks for listening to Lovely with me, your host, Bahar Ansari. If you like this show, please subscribe and share with your friends, colleagues, and family. And please leave a review on iTunes. If you miss me before then, check out baharansari.com or connect with me on social media. Join us next week when we talk more about laws, love, and life. See you soon.